Okay, good evening. I've got a new problem. Of course, if you own an RV, there's always a problem to fix. And this is something different. Um, 60,000 miles on this. Came in here the other morning. It was like 30 degrees. It was cold. I started up the engine and I knew something wasn't right because it was vibrating. I had this hard vibration. Things were rattling in the RV. I knew something wasn't right. So I knew there was there's some kind of engine miss. You know, pulled the cover off, looked down there, I could see the engine was shaking. So first of all, I said, well, I'm trying to find out what cylinder is misfiring. So I got my little laser thermal gun here, and I went outside and shot it at, at each exhaust manifold, just as it comes out of the cylinder head. And I noticed number six seemed to be much cooler than all the other cylinders. So my assumption was that was the problem. wasn't one hundred percent sure. Uh, so I, you know, I came in here, and I, you know, I, I would unplug it, and I would notice a little difference. Not a whole lot. It's really hard to tell. It seems like with a V eight engine, um, I could tell a little difference. If I pulled the injector on the, on the front one, I could notice a much larger difference. <clears throat> you got to pardon my voice. It's been this way for two months. After a cold, I don't know if I'm ever going to get it back, but. First of all, to get these injector clips off, they're a real pain. You got this little, this, this little green clip, and that thing needs to come. come you would think when well, you just pull it up one click, it would release, but it still won't. I had to get it completely out. Then you can push the little tab and, and get it loose. But you just have to kind of squeeze and wiggle, wiggle back and forth, and keep playing with it till you get it off the connector. Just take your time, be careful, and you'll eventually get it off because you don't want to break those connectors. So. Anyway, I was I was unsure. Of course, the engine was shaking, and then it eventually threw a light. So I got a code of P0200. So I looked up that. That code is uh, an injector circuit fault. So there's something wrong with the injectors that it didn't get the right signal. The computer knows one of the injectors is not doing its job. So it threw a code. Of course, I still wasn't 100% sure which injector it was. Luckily, a friend of mine allowed me to borrow his uh, Modus scan tool, which does something called Mode 6, which get, watch, lets you watch live data. And I can watch the misfires uh, on all eight cylinders while the engine is running. But the problem is I only got a short time to troubleshoot because this only happens when it's cold, like in the morning first thing. Once you start it up, you know, after two minutes, the rest of the day, the engine runs perfect, smooth as a clock, and no misfires. So I, I happened to grab a picture of it with my phone uh, this morning. I came out here, started up, and you notice here on cylinder, you can barely see it, but cylinder number six on its history, I had 103, 173 misfires within like 15 seconds. And the other odd thing, I also got 182 misfires on cylinder five. Of course, you can see up here the firing order. So there's, there's six, and opposing is five. So that kind of throws me off. What's the odds of two injectors going bad at the same time? What's the odds of two coils going bad at the same time? But because I got the P0200 injector circuit, I got to assume it is an injector, one of them. So my next test is I'm going to pull the fuel rail. I got my air compressor in here with me. I'm going to blow out the dust around everything, around the injectors. And I'll pull the fuel rail. I'm going to swap the injectors from uh, from cylinder six to cylinder eight, and then tomorrow morning when it's cold, I'll start it. My assumption is the miss will follow. I'm assuming then cylinder eight will will now have the, the miss count. And then I'll know for sure. Okay, I need to order an injector. But it's it's kind of weird. I don't know what's going on with with cylinder five. I'm hoping maybe. Because cylinder six is misfiring so bad, it's maybe affecting cylinder five, and it's somehow the computer's picking that up as, as a miss. Also, not 100% sure because I really don't know what I'm doing, so I'm just kind of winging it, trying to figure it out as I go, which makes it interesting. So I'll start pulling the fuel rail, and I'll see how that goes, and I'll video that for you also. Okay, I'm just about ready to pull the injector. It just takes a 10 millimeter. All you need is a 10 millimeter deep well socket to get these two uh, screws loose here. 
and another thing I did to help things along, of course I sprayed a little uh, pendant, what was this, PV blaster down around the O-rings of each injector and then I got a hold of each injector and just twisted it slightly in the bore so just to, to, to break the seal. Uh, of course also remember to release the fuel pressure because you got probably have like 50 or 60 psi on the fuel rail so of course I've got this sending unit on mine so I, loose, I loosened that up because I've got my fuel gauge mounted in the dash so I know what's going on uh, so I got, got that done and I'm about ready to lift up the fuel rail you can see how this one's already up so high I'm going to get the rest, rest of them off here and I put a little uh, penetrating oil on this o ring here so it should release so I should have these out just in a second and I'll see what they look like cool so I'm making progress <clears throat> you can see the fuel rail is off there's number eight injector. I've done remove number six. You can see the fuel dripping. And quite a bit of fuel came out because there's a lot in this fuel rail. So be ready for that. It really stinks in here now. And here is my suspected fuel injector. I think it's bad. <clears throat> and I will move it to number eight. And there's these little clips. So once you lift the rail up, as you can see, like in this, I, I, there's no need to take these off yet, so I hope I don't have to. But I just got me a little screwdriver and, uh, and ease these clips off. Just be careful so it don't go flying somewhere. And, uh, and, and once I did that, the injector still didn't want to come out real easy. I mean, it's kind of, it, they're just kind of loose somewhat. So you have to kind of twist them around a little bit. But one thing that helped me is I sprayed a little bit of that penetrating oil on there to soften up the o-ring just a little bit. You have to kind of work it and wiggle it. It'll eventually come out. Uh, just can't do it with one hand. So, but you get the idea. Just wiggle that out. I'm going to take this one out. Move it here. Swap around. Put things back together. And then hopefully tomorrow the problem will move to the other cylinder. And I will have my diagnosis. That's the plan anyway. Well, I just record, I just learned something that's very helpful. First of all, I just put the injector up in there, and I thought, well, then how am I going to get that clip on there? Because it's going to be such a pain to push it back on. But actually, if you put the clip on first, put the clip back on the injector, then it just snaps on. So I didn't know that, but now I do. I told you I didn't know what I'm doing, but I'm learning. You know, I'm back again. Just want to show you that's what it looks like. You put the clip on like that, and then you just reach down there and. Pushed up in the, in, the, in the rail, it'll snap right in place. Easy peasy. Okay, I just got the injector put back in. Of course, what helped me is I put a little Vaseline on the O-rings. That helped. And then once I kind of get them into place, you kind of got that little, that little camphor how the, down in there. I, was just, I just kind of steadily wiggled it back and forth. And also put another little shot of penetrating oil. And I, I just slowly... We'll go back and forth, applied a little pressure on one end, work my way across, and it all snapped down. So now I'm ready to put my bolts back in, put my clips in. In fact, I really didn't even have to unclip these because I, I had them unclipped anyway for testing because I left the front one clipped on. Man, it's a real burger to get to. Like I told you, those clips are hard to get off. It's a real pain. So I'll finish putting my bolts in here, put the clips on it, hook up the fuel line, or uh, fill off the valve again. And actually start it see it see that it runs for sure because i don't expect i'll be getting no misses yet because the engine's still slightly warm because like i said I, I never do get my misses until i get a cold start in the morning so that's what we'll do next okay like i said i don't expect i'm going to see any misfires because the engine's still warm but at least i'm gonna try to start it up after swapping the injectors out Let's see what happens <laughs> doing some swapping. Don't know if you can see it or not. Yeah, I think it barely can. See, there's a real small... So 
something, I'm after ceramic. I don't know why I'm shaking. But I'm wondering if that could be jumping spark causing the issue. So I'm going to blow that off, whatever it is. Move it to the other spark plug hole. And see if the mist goes away. Just wondering. Still chasing it. Well, I got good news and bad news. Of course, the plugs are in. The engine starts and runs. F sounds fine. But, as you can see, I still got to check engine light. I clear it. Start it and comes right back up. And again, it'll probably be the P0200. There it is, P0200. And that is the only code I got. So that means I'm not done. That's the gauge. So anyway, it did new did need new plugs, got that done. So now I gotta do some more research and try to solve this mystery P0200. Well this has been a long journey, but I think I've finally solved my P0200 on the 8.1. It's I've been working on it off and on for I don't know, a week and a half. Because it just kind of started out slowly. One cold morning, I came out here to start the RV, and as soon as I started up, I noticed the vibration, so I don't feel right, because things were rattling in the RV, which vibrating so hard, and then within a few seconds, I got a check engine light, yeah, of course, up on the dashboard. So, a little, a little further investigation, it, with, it's, what the weird part is, within 60 seconds, it start running smooth and fine. So that first time I had a check engine light uh, with my scan gauge, I went up there and cleared the code. The, then the rest of the day I started over and over again and it ran fine. No more check engine lights. I thought it was just a fluke. I didn't know what the deal was. But well, once again, a couple mornings later it was cold. I did a cold start. Again, I had that miss. And then again, I had another check engine light on. But still, within 60 seconds, the engine would warm up and run perfectly fine. Intermittent. Don't you just love those? So, morning after morning, I kept troubleshooting until I finally found out my my faulty cylinder. What I was losing on was cylinder number six. But because I only had 60 seconds to troubleshoot it every day, I had to figure out a way. So, okay, how am I going to be for sure the next day to determine is it an injector? Is it a co coil? Is it a plug? Plug wire? I didn't know for sure. So, of course, what I did, I moved the injector from cylinder number 6, moved it to cylinder number 8. Then I took the ignition coil from cylinder number 6 and moved it to cylinder number 4. Put everything back together. So the next morning I thought, okay, if I start this thing up and the mist moves, it moves to a different cylinder, I'll know what the problem is. I'll know either it's the bad injector or bad coil. Okay, back to the story. Uh, so now that um, I knew for certain that it wasn't the coil, it wasn't the injector, so I thought, okay, <clears throat> I've got a signal problem. Uh, for some reason, when it first starts up, the injector's not getting a sig signal to fire. Because uh, one thing that helped me figure that out what was happening from what cylinder was using the scan tool. Because with the scan tool, I can monitor what cylinder is firing live data. And I hope to get me a scanner like that someday. Oh, luckily a friend of mine let me borrow his. So, so my next troubleshooting, I had to try to figure out, okay, well maybe I got a bad wire. I've seen that in other videos where a mouse gets up in here and chews a wire into it and it kills it to one circuit. So I thought maybe I had a loose connection. So in order to, I pinned out in order to pin out the wires to make sure I had a good connection. This is the connector here for all the injectors. So I unplugged it. And then to get an accurate reading, you have to then go unplug every single uh, injector connector, which is a real pain because I got those little green connectors and the boogers to get off. Uh, so I <clears throat> got all them off, got my meter, and, and checked every single wire. So I knew that Every wire was good from here to this connection. So I knew nothing was a problem with this harness. 
And then I got to thinking, okay, well maybe it's a wire between between this going up in the main harness and going up into the uh, PCM, the power control module, uh, this big box here. So the, but I thought, well, that's going to be a pain. Luckily, I happen to have a spare one of these from another project. Uh, so I know it's rare, but luckily I had had one. So I thought, well, it'd be quicker just to swap out the PCM than it would be pinning out, tracking down all those wires through the wiring harness. So that's what I did, and lo and behold, the problem has went away. Because, let me go a little bit further, the problem progressed. It finally got to the point to where it was all the time. Uh, every time I would start it, hot, cold, whenever, I, w I had a completely dead signal. So it, it was slow and it was progressed. But after I put uh, the my old PCM in there, it took care of it. I'm going to start this up and show you how this whole scab hole works. Yeah, it's, it's counting. It counts up to 100 resets. And you'll notice I have no no misfires. If I, if I did, it would build history. And when I, I did this about 30 minutes ago with the old uh, PSU in there, PCM, uh, number six wasn't firing at all. It had like 12,000 misfires. But with this live data, that is really a great tool to, to test with. So it sure was an aggravating thing to figure out. But if you can get yourself, if you got a misfire and you got a P0200, check engine lights coming on, get you a hold of a, of a scanner that, that, lead, that reads mode 6 live engine data. You can monitor those misfires. Then you can quickly track down the cylinder at least then once you get the cylinder tracked down then you got okay is it is it an injector is it the computer is it a wire is it a coil a plug you got all that other stuff to deal with but at least you get started on the right cylinder instead of guessing but i'm glad this is solved i'm gonna take my buddy's scan tool back to him because he'll probably need it tomorrow morning and hopefully this helps somebody out but thanks for watching have a great day